Welcome to the Fray Flak Pack. It's Termex here, and welcome back to another Borderlands 3 video. And in today's Borderlands 3 video, we are going to be talking about the Borderlands community. Yes, that is actually going to be the topic of today's video because we have a big, big, big issue. Gearbox recently just out of the blue released the new vault cards, and within the new vault cards, this little troublemaker over here was added to the game. And everybody's talking about it, everybody's crazing about it, everybody's yelling and today is going to be all about this little relic right here called the Schluter. now when this first came out this boosted legendary drop chance by ten thousand percent i'm not lying ten thousand percent but eventually gearbox got enough backlash and hate alongside the community basically saying this is broken and it was reverted down to a thousand percent within a few hours but this still doesn't hold the question of people asking why why was this made? Why did Gearbox put this into the game? And why did they put this into the game when it is behind a paywall? Yes, if you do not own Director's Cut, you do not get to obtain this relic because it is through a paid DLC. And yeah. <laughs> but basically what this does is on a kill, it dramatically increases your chance at legendary drops for a short time. Now don't let the duration sway you in any way this just basically means when you kill something there's a higher chance this works on bosses perfectly fine and i'm going to be giving my opinions on this relic here today now i actually just obtained it i never used it i haven't watched videos on it so i want to see for myself if this relic is really pay to win and it's really not something that should be in the game of borderlands especially when it is behind a paywall so we are going to be going over into Eden 6 and killing Grave Ward really quick just to see what this relic can really do. And if it's really that big of a deal that it's stirring up death threats on Twitter, probably not. Alright, now that we are at Grave Ward, I am going to keep my normal relic on as usual. And we're going to see how many legendaries I get. Now, this isn't going to be mathematically perfect because I could get 8 legendaries when it's usually not averaged. And I am on Mayhem Zero for this testing, just so we can keep everything at a nice baseline. But I will repeat this test on Mayhem 10 as well. So we killed Grave Ward on Mayhem Zero, and we didn't get anything. This is kind of what I expected, considering we are playing on Mayhem Zero. And now we're at Grave Ward once again. We do have the Schluter Relic equipped, and we are still on Mayhem Zero. And we're going to be seeing if this gives us any more legendaries. Our first kill did not get any legendaries, so let's see if we do get any when we have the Schluter equipped. Oh, oh, okay. Well, uh, with the Schluter equipped, we did get five legendaries, six legendaries, actually. Is that six? That is six legendaries with the Schluter equipped on Mayhem Zero. And as you can see in the first kill, when I had no relic equipped, I had zero legendaries. But maybe this isn't a good representation of all this. Let's actually go on Mayhem mode, on Mayhem 11. And let's actually see if it has a big enough difference when it comes to Mayhem 11, which is what basically everybody plays on. Alright, now we are on Mayhem 11, and I'm going to get a normal kill on Grave Ward with my Pearl of Knowledge. And we're going to see how many legendaries we obtain when we are on Mayhem 11. If you're curious what build this is on screen, this is actually my Butcher Flak build. If you guys want to check this build out, click in the top right right about now. But let's get this kill on Grave Ward and see how many legendaries that he will drop us. Alrighty, I'm gonna say maybe we'll get three or four. That's usually what we get on average when killing Grave Ward, in my opinion, and we will see. And I was right. We did get three legendaries, and that's normal. Like I said before I even killed him, that's usually what you would see on Grave Ward. And now we are going to be popping on the Schluter Relic on Mayhem 11 and get another kill on Grave Ward. We did get three legendaries on Mayhem 11 with no relics, so let's see what we can get on this kill. Alright, so let's see what we get on this kill alongside with the Schluter. I'm not really expecting too much here. And, wow, honestly... That only gave us one extra legendary. Okay. So that only gave us one extra legendary in comparison to not wearing the Schluter. That's pretty interesting. 
for a relic being a thousand percent higher drop rates, that really doesn't feel like a thousand percent higher drop rates. So we're going to do this again, just in case it bugged, just in case people are confused. I'm going to try it one more time. Maybe it bugged. Maybe it was just an odd chance, but I want to confirm that it really isn't that big of a difference. And remember, no cuts, no edits. I do not want my results to be swayed or show that I'm trying to defend Gearbox for whatever reason. A lot of people like to come up with different stuff in the comments. But no cuts. Have the Schluter on and we're going to see if we still get barely any more legendaries. Oh my god, I f forget how blind Grave Ward is. And okay, that time it was different. That's That's quite a few legendaries. That is definitely quite a few. We got three, four, five, six, seven. Looks like eight legendaries total. And I have read into this. This relic does not count for dedicated drops, which is a good thing in my opinion. But one thing seems to be clear through all of this, and that is it indeed gives you more legendaries. It indeed increases the chances and gives you a lot more drops. But what does all of this mean? Does this mean that we should be crazy, over-exaggerated about this? Now, in my opinion at least, I personally believe if you have the DLC and you need a farm for legendaries and you just want to get new loot and new guns, there's no reason not to be running this relic when you're farming for legendaries. It just personally boosts your legendary luck. It's a lot better than your guardian rank luck. It's a lot better than the other relic that boosted luck. I don't even know what that relic's name is because nobody uses it. But this relic, it literally just increases every chance to get a legendary and i don't i i feel like they could have done something different you know they could have did anything else you could have done any other relic that boosted something but you had to choose this what but now the same could be said for anything else when it comes to the vault cards if you don't own the dlc you can't get these weapons of course but when it comes to a relic that statistically increases your odds at something in the game i feel like it's a little too much i feel like it's not something that it's like adding the OPQ system behind a paywall. It's things like the strongest item, something that obviously gives you an advantage behind a paywall. If this was a normal thing in the game, I wouldn't be making this video or even getting myself within the drama of all of this. But when you put something like this that statistically makes your chances better and gives you an advantage over someone that hasn't spent money, that's a little bit of a problem in my opinion. Do I think they should remove the relic? Maybe, maybe, but do I think it's a huge deal in terms of the gameplay itself, legendary drop late candy, but in terms of the mindset of Gearbox for even putting something like this behind a paywall, I don't think it's something that we should just be okay with. I think in this game, there's never really been a competitive advantage in Borderlands, but this is the first time I've ever seen an advantage in a Borderlands game that isn't, well, DLC power creep. I think that's just a give me when it comes to any Borderlands game. Most DLCs contain the better weapons in the game. Honestly, let me know what you guys think in the comments because this one, I'm not 100% on. I'm usually on one side or the other when it comes to these kind of videos, but in this situation, I really don't know. I really don't know how this is going to boil over with the Borderlands community. I don't know if you guys are going to be more accepting of this kind of thing or if you want to punch Gearbox in the face. But you guys let me know in the comments down below. And if you guys made it this far in the video, I do want to say thank you. And alongside that, I am putting out a Warframe series on my channel. It's called Warframe for Noobs. It's basically introducing new players into the Warframe community. If you could show some love to those videos whenever you get the chance, it would mean a lot to me. But also mean a lot to me if you leave a like on this video as it spreads my Borderlands videos out to the Borderlands 3 community. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to join the flag pack and join my Discord, which is in the description below if you guys want to talk to me, talk to all the cool people in the Discord, and yeah, I hope you guys have a terrific day, and I'll see you guys later.